We're well aware that Tanzania shut down hydroelectric stations due to excess electricity for quite some time now. But what we hope to understand even further, how will this affect Tanzania and its neighbors, such as Kenya, such as Zambia, Burundi, Rwanda, and the list goes on. There have been some developments in this space. And as we know, Tanzania was struggling with shortages for the past few years. So it's now quite a surprise to see that the country has managed to incur an excess in hydroelectricity production. This is quite an achievement for Tanzania. It bodes well for the country, of course, because this can only has positive inputs. <clears throat> this leaves Tanzania with a multitude of different options. So today we'll try to understand what those are. So to start from the beginning, Tanzania has made the decision to close down five hydroelectric stations, including the prominent Mwal including the prominent Mwalimu and Yeri hydroelectric stations. I do apologize if I mispronunciate the names. Now this is due to an overflow of electricity in the national grid. This moves comes as the primary plant alone has been able to supply power to the major cities, including Dar es Salaam. Amidst low demands and excessive production, causing halt in operation. This situation is attributed to 2,115 megawatt. Julius and Nauri hydropower dam being nearly full with water following heavy rain leading to a surplus of electricity in the system. So the decision to shut down the hydroelectric stations, it's a rare response to the excess. This is a situation that the country has never had to dealt with before. This is a first time Tanzania has been placed into a position where they have an excess in electricity, not just a minor excess. No, they have a large excess to the point they have to shut down their power stations. Now, this is due to the fact that they've experienced heavy rainfalls and extreme weather and energy production. Now, the implication of the energy infrastructure and security, the shutdown of the hydroelectric station raises questions about the resilience and the adaptability of Tanzania energy infrastructure. It also underscores the importance of balancing energy supply and demand to ensure stability in the national grid and to prevent potential wastage of resources. So like I said, there's many options for Tanzania. One of those is of course to export your excess electricity and to earn money for the country. Another option is also to store this electricity using large amount of battery farms especially for countries that see a excess in electricity and they need to store it for future use. Of course, storing electricity is no easy feat and it is an expensive option also, but undoubtedly these will be a very viable options. The ripple effect of Tanzania decision would extend beyond its borders, impacting energy dynamics in East African region. Additionally, the management of excess electricity production holds significance in the broader context of sustainable energy practice and environmental consideration. Now here's the thing, it is no coincidence that Tanzania is the country that is experiencing an excess in electricity. I say it's not a coincidence because Tanzania has been on a very long-term trajectory and plan to make sure that their economy is as self-sufficient as possible. They have made great progress in many different areas. And one of those including their energy infrastructure providing energy to them and their citizens. This is no coincidence. The country of Tanzania is very ambitious and the people are also very ambitious and they're thriving as an economy. It is very interesting to see the small effects of what excess of electricity could create in the prospects of perspective. Perspective also when you consider the fact that the way Tanzania has been developing its economy with infrastructure development, the people are along for the journey. Essentially, Tanzania, essentially, ta essentially, if Tanzania continues to do what they're doing, they will outcompete their neighbors. Their most competitive neighbors, of course, is such as Kenya and perhaps Ethiopia. But there's also a close neighbors such as Uganda. There's also smaller, there's also smaller countries as well. But when you look at an infrastructure scale, Tanzania is the country that they do the most and they say the least. And let me just remind you, it is five hydro dams that they've had to close down. Not one, not two, not three, not four, five. 
that tells you all you need to know. If anything, this is a great thing for the citizens. If the supply is high, demand will go down and the price should also go down for citizens. So it'd be very interesting if you live in Tanzania, how has this affected you and your friends and families? Have prices of electricity gradually decreased with the excess of electricity your country has been creating? This is something that all Tanzanians must be grateful and proud of because this is a feat that is accomplished by your country. Tanzania is a large country and if you look on a map, you can simply see how many lakes it inhabits. This gives the country great access to water flow. It also gives the country access to building infrastructure such as dams and that's exactly what they've done. They've built a lot of dams across the country and now they can focus on the next great thing to accomplish. It seems like Tanzania won't be fo it seems like Tanzania won't be struggling with a lack of electricity in the near future. As the population rises, of course, the demand of electricity will also rise. However, for the foreseeable future, one cannot predict that they will have any struggles. Now, to be more exact on this information, I've found some great information from Kennedy Wandera, and he posted this tweet explaining very simple. The country's main plant, that's the Mualimu and Yera hydroelectric station alone generated enough electricity to power major cities, including Dar es Salaam. That station alone, ladies and gents, was enough to power their major cities. And we do have a statement, an official statement from the state-run company. And I quote, we have turned off all the stations because the demand is low and the electricity production is too much. We have no allocations now. The Julius Engea hydropower dam is said to be almost full with water following heavy rain, of course, that we've already stated. But it's just incredible to see that just one of their major dams, the main dam, was enough for the country to power its economy. Authorities in February switched off the first turbine with the capacity of 235 megawatts of new hydroelectric plant to double power generation capacity and help reduce month-long power and helps to reduce month-long power retention. In. It is the first time Tanzania would suffer chronic power shortages as closed hydropower station due to excess production. This is the first time they've had to do this. This puts them in a very powerful position within the East African region. The next country to follow their footstep is perhaps Ethiopia. As you know, the Grand Rosense Dam is Ethiopia's masterpiece that they were working on for quite some years. And I believe that dam has now started producing electricity as construction finishes. This is a good trend for Africa. If this continues, more positivities are to come for Africa for sure. Now it gets even more interesting when you look at their possibilities of exporting said electricity. We do have a statement from Zambia. We will not be importing 300 megawatt from Tanzania, but the line we will construct will have the potential to import 300 megawatts. Zambia's power utility company has classified the 300 megawatts line Zambia and Tanzania and Kenya Power Interconnector is intended to have capacity to transit 300 megawatts of electricity. Speaking in a recent exclusive interview with Zambia Business Time, spokesperson Matongo Mwambi refuted claim that the company will import the amount of electricity, added that the 300 megawatts is the potential amount. So you can clearly see this is a connected East Africa. And this connection between East African countries will only grow more prominent. As partnership furthers, it will continue to develop because there is currently the project, the Tanzanian Power Master Plan. This project, which is aimed to aim to connect grids of Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya and Zambia. This is quite extensive and you can imagine there's other countries who could also benefit. What of Burundi? What of Rwanda? There's other smaller countries that are neighbors as well who could also benefit long term. This is a great development for this is a great development for Tanzania and East Africa. This is a closer look at the Rufiji hydroelectric power station. This is one of Tanzania's power station. This is one of Tanzania's dams and it's quite an impressive feat of engineering. 
you can only imagine the size of this dam and the capacity that it's able to handle the the benefits that it would add will add that it's currently adding to the country of tanzania this is another look at these images these graphics they really do showcase what it really means for tanzania when you look at an overhead map out of this dam you really start to understand that this is why they're able to use their biggest dams to power major cities you know the country is well positioned like i said even with the population growth at its current pace in the near future you can't see this country running low on electricity because they've taken the time to invest in such an incredible infrastructure that will benefit them and neighboring countries this is a 200 this power station is capable of 2115 megawatts this is another hydro dam another power station so I would like to hear from you, especially if you live in Tanzania. How has this excess electricity affected you? Thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you in our next video.